I mean, there's kind of a silver lining to what Viola did. A silver lining? A silver lining? Hi, party people. Hi. I am here with the most esteemed Mia Jarvik, who played Thistle in The Party. And I'm Tori Chancellor, one of the writers and co-producers. Uh, thank you so much for joining us oh. to talk all things Thistle and The Party. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, you are a very history actor with a very impressive theater resume. And I just want to talk a little bit about your background and like what like led up to The Party prior to that. Yeah. Thank you, first of all. Yeah, um, I think, you know, I've, I've had some film training and gotten to do some cool film stuff, but theater is sort of my home, home turf. Mm -hmm. I grew up doing a lot of stuff, Seattle Children's Theater, uh, a very angsty and awesome youth theater company, and then I was an English theater double major in college. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's sort of, sort of my home and some of my favorite roles that I've ever gotten to do have been in theater. I think what is your theater tell is I think out of all the cast, you probably made the least amount of mistakes. <laughs> and I only say that because we were putting the blooper reel together. It's how do you make a blooper of someone who's not messing up? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I noticed that and I was like, oh, it's too professional. I know. She's just too good at her <laughs> job, too you guys. She's perfect all the time. I know. So hard. I know. <laughs> Did you have any experience with D&D &D, uh, before coming into the party? Oh, Tori, you know I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for our viewers at home. Yeah, yeah no, I was, uh, I would say, I think myself and Nabila were the two biggest Interesting. real life newbies. Okay. Um, what was that learning curve like? Oh, it was, I mean, it was fun. So I, my experience was, I'd, you know, I had some friends who played D&D &D and had heard about great things from them, but always just kind of felt like, eh, like it's too, too much to learn. You know, the bar is too high. I don't know if you can put in the work to figure it out. Um, so then when I got cast, I was like, okay, <laughs> time is now. <laughs> and I just started watching everything on you YouTube. You did your own karate kid training montage. So much training. It was like picture like myself, I'm sitting with my roommate who mm -hmm. also like hasn't really played, and we're we're watching a critical role one shot, and like literally every five seconds we're like pausing and being like, okay, so they seemed to both move and do something. So I guess you could do both <laughs> things like in the same turn. Okay, play. Okay, wait, pause. So she seems to be controlled. Like, it was like that. Oh <laughs> my was, God. It, yeah, it was great. And from then to now, mm -hmm. would you say you've evolved in your understanding? Because it has been about eight to 10 months mm -hmm. probably since we were like casting and filming. Like, where are you now? Yeah, yeah. And you know, at the beginning of things, I had uh, I had two really good friends who, who gave me like a lesson. And I took that lesson in my own studying and and uh, we went into a little zoom one shot that the cast played so that was my first time actually playing D&D &D, okay. um, which was so much fun and I was playing as Thistle and it was great and then post uh, shooting I mean and then day one of shooting literally the first time I'd ever held a d20 because we played online that one yeah. other time it's a big deal yeah it was it was exciting and so then it, like I'd spent like two weeks pretending I knew how to play mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which was interesting and then and then we actually started a cast game afterwards, which has been so much fun ever since. That's and, been fun. Like, I'm definitely, like, you know, you can learn a lot from, like, trying to know the rules, and you just won't know until you actually play. And then it suddenly just comes to life in a really beautiful way, and you're like, oh. How do you personally relate to your character, Thistle? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Thistle and I are alike in many ways and different in many ways. But I think... For me, there's something to this little, to her insecurities I relate to a lot, you know, especially you know, being an artist and trying to feel like you're good enough to be doing what you're doing, especially when all of your friends and the people you're surrounded by are on what seem to be more secure mm -hmm. paths in their lives and sort of that constant, you know, questioning. And that I think is so relatable probably to me and probably to a lot of people. Any differences, big differences between you and Thistle? I think th th the way Thistle handles her crush is, is a little different than mine. <laughs> Are you a little for? Are you like forward, or are you just like going like you just let not let it play out at all? Or because she, I feel like, lives in a very weird medium place of like yeah. I'm going to enjoy the perks of this, but I'm not actually going to actively do anything that could jeopardize this nor make it move forward. Right. No, I think that like what she 
what she like wants and enjoys of like you know getting this attention but and again this goes back to her insecurities right like being able to to have a little crush and get some attention from someone who you know is never going to reject you because mm-hmm. it was never actually possible it, mm-hmm. they're someone who's unattainable they're taken and so just being able to like have a little you know a little warm feeling inside you around them without ever having to worry what's going to happen because of that um, I, I think that her insecurities play into that in a big way, and I don't. I don't think that for me, like my, I have as many insecurities in that realm. Totally, totally, yeah. totally. What was your favorite scene in the film? <laughs> oh, so many. Oh, it was really. I we, was. We can ro- run the Rolodex. Okay, of... great. Well, I, I did have one that came to mind that was not what I was expecting. Okay. Um, because I mean, obviously, all the costume stuff is amazing. The days where we got to be, you know, in the black box doing improv with Ali were made like so many really fun days, but. The one that actually did come to mind was um, at the end of episode two. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was pretty early in filming, and we were all in our street clothes, you know, at the sort of living room setup. And it's when Ecstasy and DM come back in, and, you know, and we explain that Viola's gonna join, and then DM does her. Welcome to, yeah. welcome to the party. To I know. Party, it's Viola. such a good, wholesome moment. I just, just remember standing there, like, in formation. I'm, like, holding my bag, and I'm, you know, looking, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm in a sitcom. <laughs> you know? I know. Like, and and it's, the, it's such a tone definer, yeah. too, like, the rest mm-hmm. of things to come. And it was such, that was probably, like, day two or day yeah, three. Yeah, it was early. So and early. it was just like, oh. I mean, because being, yeah. like, part of a core group of a sitcom, that's the dream. I mean, yeah. that is so, so the dream. And yeah. so it just... Like, uh, you guys yeah. as the cast are all like really close now because obviously yeah. eight to 10 months <laughs> has passed since we've even filmed that. But like, you know, on that day two of filming, what were the vibes amongst you all? You know, oh. like what were you guys like feeling and thinking? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely early, early days, yeah. you know, so we we're still getting to know each other, but we had such great, I think, chemistry as a whole group off the bat, you know, it's like, you know, we like started our group chat and it's like, yeah, to share pictures but also for friendship. You know? <laughs> I know, let me like sow those seeds now, friendship, and obviously yeah. they've sprouted. I, which I is... definitely did a lot of that. Theoretical physics on YouTube asks, mm. aside from yourself, which character in the party is your favorite? <laughs> it's tough. It's a toughie. I, I had the great, amazing fortune of getting to do uh, earlier table read. Mm-hmm. And at that point, there were two roles that were sent to me, uh, which were Thistle and Ecstasy. And so I think ecstasy will also have a special place in my heart because there was a time when I was like, ooh, like that would be a fun mm-hmm, role mm-hmm. to play. And I think I responded to that email being like, yeah, I mean, I would be so down for either of these characters. They both look so fun. Um, Thistle is more in line with what I tend to be cast as. Ecstasy, I think, would be such a blast. She is such a cool character and has so many, even in the first episode, you know, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, that would be a blast. Yeah. So. And going down that rabbit hole of getting to choose, you have the very special status, I guess, of being kind of with us from the beginning because you were at the table read for our original, when we were first writing these episodes and being like, oh my gosh, like we have to actually have a cast to read through this, show our friends, pick it apart, figure <laughs> out what's working, not what's working and what's yeah. not working. Did anything like surprise you in the evolution and like how has it been like coming from then? Yeah, to now? no, it was so cool. I get like just a little backdoor peek into some of the earlier stages. Obviously there was a lot that happened before that, um, but First of all, just getting to see the whole thing read by different a different cast mm-hmm. was really cool, and yeah. seeing the differences just based on who's playing the character in the character. I think I feel like Yorick is a really great example. The Yorick that day was amazing, really talented, but so different than Zach. Episodes changed, especially six and seven. Mm-hmm. And I actually went back to look again at my at like that original script because I was like, wait, but how is it possible that these scenes all happened before that? And then I was like, oh yeah, they did. They just weren't connected to, mm-hmm. I don't know if I should explain all of No, that. I mean, yeah, but it was basically like we moved up the reveal of the deception. Right. Uh, because we wanted a framing device for how all of that goes forward. You right. know, with, a, with yeah. the lens of, in the wake of this destruction, kind of, how what does this look yeah. like? And that means that like the, the Jean Thistle, you know, car boxing and apology, the the date between Ecstasy and DM, and then even Viola and Yorick at the school, though it was a very different scene, those all happened before the reveal, which meant that all of them, you know, happened without, moving it to after the reveal allowed 
all of the characters to reflect on what Violet had said mm -hmm. and made those scenes, I think, so much more poignant because they were like introspective in that new way. So and we needed ex an extra really force to really tell that. Because, you know, when you work so long on something, it's like you just don't even see, you don't see the forest for the trees like yeah. at a certain point. And no, it was at one point, like I think when you were reading, it was going to be the notebook is revealed and then the stream is actually happening and she runs right. to the It's yeah, like, like that is one. so much to happen <laughs> in like one 10 minute span. So yeah. like I'm happy we gave it yeah. some breath. But. And that you see like the... Episode six, I guess it was always going to be like sort of these different groups doing different things, mm -hmm. but having the reveal happen first, it makes it, okay, here's our splintered party. Like, here's what could happen if they don't resolve this. It's, it's the bummer so episode. Bummer Big episode. bummer. I love it. Hey, next week we're going to be back with all things Leah Jarvik and more about her role in the party. So, we'll see ya. Bye. Fun. And yeah, yeah and I became awful. much better at Overcooked. So. The game that notoriously ruins relationships. Oh, you does know. It? Oh, I guess I ruined mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going it's on. It's overcooked. It is stressful, it's and I think some it... of us are blunt and want to get things done, and maybe don't sugarcoat mm. instructions very well. Wow, this has been an ad for overcooked. <laughs> <laughs>